slide through nine. In this lecture, we'll learn um, finding the probability of uh, compound events using addition rule, and uh, the same thing with uh, multiplication rule and multiplication rules, and the conditional probability. This is an important one, and applying the Bayesian rule. So these are addition rules, multiplication rules, conditional probability, and the Bayesian rule. Now let's start with the uh, mutually exclusive events. Now, uh, two events in a sample space uh, S are called mutually exclusive events or disjoint events if they cannot occur at the same time. And uh, in terms of sets, we can say they have no outcomes in common. So they're called mutually exclusive because uh, mutually they exclude each other. So if one happens, the other cannot happen. Um, so uh, if they're mutually exclusive, events, their intersection is equal to an empty set, and which means uh, the probability that A and B occurs at the same time is equal to zero, or their intersection, the probability of their intersection is zero. And in the Venn diagram, um, this is the case, they don't have any, any outcome in common. Now let's look at the addition rule. If A and B are Mutual, uh, mutual exclusive events in a sample space S, then the probability that A or B will occur or happen is given by these formulas. Here, uh, A, uh, A and B, I'm taking them as events. You know, uh, sometimes we can take them as events, and uh, so when we calculate the probability, we use the sets instead of them. So if we um, state it in terms of events, so we say the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus probability B minus the probability of A and B. And in terms of set, uh, P, the probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. So you see OR uh, corresponds to union and uh, AND corresponds to intersection. Now this uh, formula is for the uh, not mutually exclusive events. So if they're mutually exclusive, this formula still works, except this one becomes zero, and we have this formula. So here, you know, this, this becomes zero. If they're mutually exclusive, their intersection is empty set, so it becomes zero. So you don't see anything here, so you just don't write anything. So for the mutual events, exclusive events, then the P, A, or B, if you write it in terms of an event, as an event, or these are events, or these are sets here, if you write them as sets, then it's the union, probability of A union B is equal to probability A plus probability B, and this part here becomes zero, so you don't see it here. Now, uh, Let's determine which events are mutually exclusive and which are not. Okay, the experiment here is a single die is rolled. Getting an odd number and getting an even number. So can we get this event, getting an odd number and getting an even number at the same time? So it's not possible. So A, if you write it, write A as a set, so it will be 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 5, and B as uh, 2, 4, 6. So when you take the intersection, you look at the intersection, it's empty set, so it means they are mutually exclusive. Now let's look at the other uh, two sets, two events. Getting at 3, so if this is A, a is just 3, and getting an odd number, it's just 1, 3, and 5. So when you take the intersection of them, it's not empty set, it's just 3. So you say it's they're not mutually exclusive, so they're not mutually exclusive. Now, 
Now look, let's look at these two events. Uh, one of them is getting an odd number and getting a number less than four. So getting an odd number, let's say this is the event A, and uh, as a set we can write it as uh, one, three, five. And B, getting a number less than four, it makes one, two, three. Now when you look at them, you see A intersection B is uh, three, one and three. So it's not empty set, you know, it's not empty set. So this is not mutually, they are not mutually exclusive then. Now getting a number greater than four, this is uh, event A, getting a number less than four. So as you see here, um, they are clearly uh, mutually exclusive because um, we are talking about the number greater than four, which makes five, six, and, and a number less than four, which makes one, two, or three. And uh, as you see, their intersection is clearly empty set. Nothing is in common. So it will be just mutually exclusive sets. These are mutually exclusive sets. Now let's look at this example. Now let's try to find, uh, calculate some probability here. Uh, in an experiment of rolling a single dice, so this is our experiment, find the following probabilities, getting an odd number or getting um, a number greater than four. Uh, you can use the formula here. You don't have to, but you can use the formula. Okay, now let's say this is A is getting odd number. And B, let's say, getting uh, a number greater than 4. So then if you write it as a set, A will be just 1, 3, and uh, 5. And B is just um, 5 and 6. Now, um, what is P, A, or B? Okay, let's write it P, A, or B. So this is... Sorry, this is P A or B. If you write the rule here, P A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, and uh, in, ter in terms of you know set notation, you can write it as like A intersection B. Now, what is A intersection B here? Is A intersection B is just five here? So you can say this is uh, the probability of A is three over six because we have three elements here and uh, two over six and because we have two elements and p a intersection b uh, it's just one element here so it has to be just four over six now this is by using the rule here but if you don't want to use this rule and is it if it is clear to you know find it by the sets directly you can do this way. Now this is the second method, I will say. Or the, this is the first method, and the, the other one maybe it might be second. What is A union B? A union B is here. One, three, five, and six. So it will be just four here, divided by all, uh, all the possibilities, or all the outcomes, so it's six. So you will get the same answer as the formula. Now let's do the second problem here. Um, in the second problem, I think this is changing. Let's see. In the second problem, we have getting an odd number is uh, just A and uh, it corresponds to 135. And getting a number greater than five, it makes only, okay, a number greater than five, which is only six, because we are rolling a dice, so we have the numbers from one to six. Okay, now, okay, the first method is like P, A, or B is equal to P, A, um, A, union B. And you can write here A union B, which is uh, 1, 3, 5, and 6. So 
you can say that we have six, uh, four numbers here, so it will be four over six. Now, uh, the second method is we can use the formula here. The formula is PA or B is equal to PA plus PB plus minus PA intersection B. And here PA is uh, 3 over 6 and PB it's 1 over 6 and then we need the intersection here so when we look at the intersection um, a intersection B is you see empty set so if it is empty set this becomes you know the probability here will be equal to 0 so then you end up with 4 over 6 as you see both methods can give you the same I mean it will give you the same uh, probability now let's look at this example now the probability of B, B A, the left probability of A is equal to 0 0.5 and the probability of A union B is 0 0.72 and the probability of B find probability of B if A and B are mutually exclusive events so let's write what is given to us, the probability of A, 0 0.5, the probability of A union B, 0 0.72, and A and uh, B are mutually exclusive. Now, these are given to us, and uh, it's asking what is the probability of B. Now, can we use these uh, three information or some information from uh, from them to find probability of B? So we have to establish a result involving the probability of B, the given information. Now, we have a formula for this, uh, the, the for the A union B. The probability of A union B is, as we know, probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So um, uh, do we know this one? This is 0 0.72. And uh, do we know this one? This is 0 0.5. And the probability of B, we don't know. OK, how about this part? And uh, here, this in this part, we can use the fact that A and B are mutually exclusive. Because mutually exclusive means the probability of A and B or A intersection B is zero. So for this reason, for the uh, mutually exclusive event, uh, the probability A and B or A intersection B becomes zero. So we can disregard this part. So the probability of B will be equal to 0 0.72 minus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.22. Oh, let's look at this example. <clears throat> in a sample of 45 students from the deanship of prep school, 25 students are playing soccer, 15 are playing tennis, and five are playing both tennis and soccer. If one student is randomly selected, find the probability that he is playing um, soccer or tennis. Now, um, the important part, uh, important uh, phrase here is the or. An important word is the or. This is the connector here, soccer or tennis. Now, we have to check if this, the probability of the student plays soccer. Okay, I will just, okay, we can write it, you know, a uh, long way. But I will just say the probability of, so when I say soccer, student plays soccer. Okay, maybe it's better I say here, here A okay, or S. Okay, I will say this is S. S. And uh, T, let's say the student plays tennis. Now, the probability of, so it's asking what? It's asking the probability of S or T. So the student plays soccer or the student plays tennis. It's asking this. And what is the um, the formula for it? Uh, the probability of S plus the probability of T minus the probability of S and T. Now, <coughs> uh, 
probability of soccer, a student play soccer, is the uh, number of students playing soccer. Divided by the all number of students. This is all the number of students um, playing tennis divided by all all students. The number of all students minus the number of students playing soccer and tennis. I'll just say T divided by the number of all students. Now the students playing soccer is, okay, how many students are there? 25. So 25, the number of all students, 45, because our sample set is 45 now. Choose 45, we're talking about 45 students. And the student playing tennis is how many students? 15 playing tennis. So 15 over 45 minus, again, the number of students, 45. And how many students are playing soccer and tennis? Soccer and tennis. So they're playing both, like five of them are playing both tennis and soccer. So we have this one. And when you calculate this one, you will get 35 over. Uh, 45. So the playing the probability that a student, a chosen student, plays soccer or tennis is 35 or 45. Now let's look at this example. In this example, the final grades of students in statistics are given in a table. <clears throat> now here are the two variables, the grades and uh, the gender. And here are the total of A's and B's and C's and B's and F's and the total of the males and females. Now here, this one is the total of all students. Now, if one student is randomly selected, find the following probabilities. The student is a male student or an A student. So I will just write this one as, okay, before this one, I want to draw your attention to here, this OR. So this is an important connector here. So OR, I will just write it as the probability that the student is male. So I will just write male here. So, but you understand this is the student is a male. You, uh, OR, an A student, so. Uh, by using the addition rule, I can say that this is equal to the probability of uh, the student is male and the probability of the student is a student minus the probability that he is male and a student. Now, this one is obviously the number of males divided by the total number of students, total number of students. plus the number of A's, A students, divided by the total students, total number of students. And this is, this one here is male and A. So we have to check male and A. So how many students are there? 20, so it has to be, okay, I will just say this is um, male, the number of students, the male and A male and A's divided by the total number of students. This will give you males here, 230, the total of males here, regardless of um, grades, 230 divided by 520, plus uh, A's, the total of A's, regardless of gender, 63, divided by 520, minus male and, male and A, this makes 20, so divided by 520, so it makes <clears throat> 293 minus 20, 273 divided by 520. So I will just write here, <clears throat> this is 273 over 520. 
Now, let's look at the other uh, part of the question. So we have another question here. Uh, question two. Question two is uh, the probability that the student is a female or a C student. So we will do it, it the same way. Uh, so this is important. We have an OR here. So we will use the addition rule. So it will be the probability of female plus the probability of C minus the probability of females that who are getting C. So this. Female and C, you have to look for female and C here at the same time. Anyway, the females, the number of females here will be just is okay. The females, the number of females, 290 divided by the total 520 plus the probability of C. So, unless it's not like this, uh, just it says female, so you have to check for the total for the email. If it says C, you have to check for the total uh, for C. For 72 divided by 520 minus female C, it's uh, female and C, it's 94. So this will be the answer then. So, you can do the calculation here. Um, I'm not sure about the answer. It will be 368 divided by 520, maybe. Now, let's do this exercise. Um, the table below gives the number of students by track and English level in the past year. So, here are the one variable is the track, and uh, one variable is the level of English. Now, we have the totals for the um, tracks and we have the totals for the uh, English levels and this is the total number of students. Now, um, <clears throat> find the probability that he is studying in health track and he's in advanced level English. So it says here and. So this and makes, um, so we, it makes an intersection with the health track and the advanced English level. So, health track and English level is uh, advanced. So we have to say advanced and health. So it has to be 250. So you can say this one: 250 divided by the total number of students. It's um, because we are choosing one student from among all students, so it has to be all students here. Now, he is studying in engineering or intermediate level English. So you can write this one like P engineer, so P engineering or intermediate level. So this will be uh, by using the addition rule. You can have this P engineering plus P intermediate level minus the probability of uh, English, sorry, engineering and intermediate level in English. So this is uh, for the engineering, okay? Now, let's write this one there. The probability of engineering is 370. Probability of engineering is 370 over 520. Then uh, the probability of intermediate, intermediate level is uh, 407 divided by 520. And the probability that uh, the student is in engineering and in engineering and has intermediate level English, it will be equal to Just the intersection of the engineering and the intermediate level. So it will be 167 divided by 520. 
So we have these three things, so we'll put them in here. So it will give you, okay, I will just write here. It's equal to, this one now is equal to, okay, we'll just place here. It will be equal to 367, I mean, 370 over 520 plus 407 divided by 520 and then minus 167 divided by 520. Uh, you can calculate the rest. Now, he is studying in the science track or uh, studying in engineering track. So again, it's uh, an or question here. Uh, let's look at here. It says science or engineering. So it will be again by addition rule the probability of science plus the probability of engineering uh, minus the probability science and engineering. So this is, uh, we know that when the probability of science is the number of science or divided by all uh, students, the number of students. So this has to be science is 380 divided by 520 plus engineering. What's the probability of engineering? Engineering's total is 370 and divided by What size. The table below gives the final results of students. If one person is selected randomly, find the probability that the student is male or did not pass. So um, here are um, okay, the female total, a male total, and pass total, and did not pass total, and the total number of students here. So let's write this one, the, the probability that the student is male, so I will just say male, okay, but you understand the probability that student is male. Or, oh, we have an or here, this is important, or did not pass. Okay, I will just say not pass. Now, uh, according to the addition rule, it will be just the probability that he's a male plus the probability that he didn't pass, the student did not pass, minus the probability that the male uh, and the not pass. So we can write this one as the probability of male is the number of males in total divided by uh, the total number of students, which is 510 divided by 1000, plus not pass 160 divided by 1000, and then minus male and not pass male, male and not pass, it's 100, so we write this 100 divided by 1000. So this is, um, okay, if you calculate, this is 600, 570 divided by 1,000. So this is the probability that the student is male or did not pass. Now let's look at the rule for the independent events. So multiplication rule for independent events. Now, uh, let's see what is, uh, what do we mean by independent event? So A and B are independent event if the uh, occurrence of A or happening of A does not affect the occurrence of B and vice versa. We mean uh, B also does not affect A and A does not affect B. Now, uh, let's see some examples. Uh, for example, passing statistics and failing in physical education, they have no relation, they do not affect each other, so they're independent events. Now, uh, getting a five at the at first roll and getting a four in the first, a second roll when a dice is rolled twice. 
So, um, you know, since two rows are independent and they do not affect each other, they are, they are independent. So drawing a green ball and uh, after replacement, drawing a black ball from the from an error. So it means, uh, okay, if this is the keyword here after replacement. You, you are drawing a ball here. So there are lots of balls here, let's say. You draw it and you put it, so you put it back. So it means the after means you put it back. So in this case, you still have the same amount of the urn. The urn did not change, you know, the content of the urn of the urn did not change. So it's not changing the probabilities of the, uh, you know, second draw. Okay, now let's look at the multiplication rule for the independent events. Um, now, if A and B are independent, the probability of both occurring at the same time is uh, B probability of A times probability of B. So we can say it this way. The probability of A and B, A happens and B happens, is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Let's look at this example. Now, assume in a family uh, uh, there are two children and find the probability that all children are boys. So um, we, are, we can write this way, the, the probability that the first child is a boy and the second child is a boy. So then uh, the first, the gender of the first kid and the, sec the gender of the second child, they are independent. They do not affect each other. You know, if one is boy, uh, it doesn't affect the other uh, children, the other child's gender. So this has to be equal to the first child is equal to boy times the probability that the second child is, is, a, is a boy. So the probability that the first child is a boy is like uh, how many ways can we have a boy? It's just one boy or girl. So there will be two options and we want the boy. So it will be just one or two. And then uh, again, the second child, uh, what's the probability that the second child is boy? Just uh, regardless of the other one. So it's just one over two because it might be only a boy or girl. So it has to be one over four. Now we, we use uh, here the uh, multiplication rule for the independent events. Now we have a generalization of the multiplication rule for independent events. So for example, so uh, here it is, if they're all independent, If A1, A2, AK are all independent, and uh, then a, uh, the probability of A1 and then and A2 and A3 and AK is equal to the, uh, the product of the probabilities. Now, let's uh, do an example. Now, if the probability that the team wins a match is 0 0.01, find the probability that the team wins, wins four matches. So um, basically, you can write this one as okay the first match is a win and the second match is a win and uh, uh, the third match is a win and the fourth match is a win so um but you know winning the first game and uh, winning the second game they are they do not affect each other so for this reason uh, we can write them separately okay. 
So what's the probability of the, the, the first one is a win? Uh, so it's just winning a game, it's just 0 0.01. And uh, here it will be just 0 0.001. And uh, the third one again, 0, 0, 001, because each, each game is independent of the other one. So it will be just 0 0.0.1 to the fourth power. So we use uh, this probability here. A, A1, A2, A3, and A4. Here uh, we use the general form of the multiplication rule. Now let's look at another example. Uh, a random number generator on a computer selects three integers from 1 to 20. What is the probability that all three numbers are less than or equal to 5? So uh, the computer will choose three numbers. So you can write this one like the, the probability that the first number, this number is, the number is less than or equal to five. And the second number is less than or equal to five. And the third number is uh, less than or equal to 5. So in this case, so um, the computer is selecting three integers, but um, they're independent. So the, so the computer selects them, uh, and they, it doesn't look at the previous number. So they do not affect each other. So these are independent events here, choosing uh, three numbers, independent events. So that now you can write this one here, end end as uh, the product of each event, first number is less than five times the second number is less than five times probability that the third number is less than five. So uh, each time, you know, these uh, have the same probability because they're independent events and we are doing the same event again for a number. I mean, uh, the, the computer is doing the same trial, doing the same experiment again and again, so three times. So what is the probability that uh, it's less than five, a number is less than five? So um, the probability of a number less than or equal to five is just the numbers, the number of the numbers less than or equal to five and number of all numbers. In this case, uh, the computer is, uh, you know, choosing the numbers from 1 to 20, so it will be just 20 here, all numbers, and the numbers less than or equal to 5 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and as before, so there will be 5 numbers here, so it is just 5 over 20. So. <coughs> It will be uh, 0 0.25 here, and then uh, you can uh, write here 0 0.25, and uh, this, the same probability is true for the second one, and uh, the same probability is true for the third one. So we end up with the third power of 0 0.25. This has to be equal to 0 0.25 to the third power. Now let's look at another example. Uh, assume the probability that the student passes the test of math is 0 0.721, and the probability that the student passes the test, test, test statistics test of statistics is 0 0.66, and uh, <clears throat> and we assume they're independent events here. Okay, you know, passing a course and uh, pass, passing a math exam and statistics. Okay, we accept them as independent. Uh, if one student is selected randomly, what's the probability that the student passes the test uh, of mathematics and statistics? So again, I can write this one. Uh, passing math is just PM. Okay, I will say just M passing M. So I will I will just say. M here denotes, you know, passing mathematics. 
So uh, it's better you write your, your definition of symbols at the beginning. Uh, when solving the question, it will be easy for us to evaluate your solution. So it's asking the what's the probability of passing math and uh, statistics. So we use the addition rule PM plus PS, okay, minus the probability. Uh, sorry, uh, it's and. So this is not union, okay, this is not or, this is and. So it has to be the probability of M times probability of S. So this is equal to what's the probability of uh, passing uh, mathematics? It's 0 0.71. And then uh, the other one is 0 0.66. So we have the answer here. Now the multiplication rules uh, continued. Okay, let's look at the example here. Uh, the probability of A and B is 0 0.72, and the probability of 0 0.8 uh, the, of A is 0 0.8. And if we know A and B are two independent events, and find the probability of B. So uh, A and B, the probability of A and B, since they're independent, we can say that is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Now, uh, do we have this one? Yes, it's given here. And do we have this one? It's given in the question, and it's asking the probability of B. So, and now how can we find it? So the probability of B will be equal to, if you divide both sides with 0 0.8, we'll get this one, and which is equal to 0 0.9. And now let's look at this exercise. Assume the uh, probability that a person over 40 years old is diabetic is 0 0.55, and uh, the probability that a person has hypertension is 0 0.62. If a person over 40 years old is selected randomly, find the probability that this person is diabetic and has no hypertension. Now, so it's asking the probability that, okay, let's write this one. The probability that, I will, I will just, uh, that I will just say D, okay, let's define D as uh, the person has diabetic. The person has, uh, is diabetic. And um, hypertension is, let's uh, say, the person ha um, has hypertension, it, let's say just H. So it's better you uh, write the symbols first, you define the symbols, then it will be easy for us to uh, follow your solution. So um, the probability that, so it's asking that it's diabetic and no hypertension. So no hypertension means it's not H. So uh, if you write this one, okay, and we assume they're independent of each other, this uh, diabetic and hypertension. Uh, you can understand from the question itself, or the question can tell you the uh, it's independent. Um, now here, the, the diabetic being diabetic and hypertension, as we, uh, as far as I we, we know, we are not medical experts. There is no relation between them. Uh, at least it's not given here, so it's okay to assume they're independent. The probability of the times probability of not H. So uh, then, so I will say they are independent here. So I want to note here, so depend, independent. So I'm using this formula here, this formula. Now, um, the probability of the, what's the diabetic, the probability of the diabetic here is um, 0 0.55. So I'll write here 0 0.55. Now uh, let's come to this one here, P not H. So the probability of not H. So if you re remember the complement, so it's one minus the probability of H. So the probability of H is given here, the hypertension is given as 0 0.62. So then <clears throat> 0 
and 1 minus 0 0.62, 0 0.55 times 0 0.38. So this is the answer here you can calculate. Now let's talk about the conditional probability. <coughs> The conditional probability is the probability that the second event B occurs given that the first event A has already occurred. So, um, and it is denoted by the probability of B given that A. So we use a vertical bar here. So this is the symbol for the conditional probability. So if you use this, if you see this symbol, it will be conditional probability. And also we can say this one as, uh, the, this is the probability that, um, B, given that, okay, this is a very important phrase here, uh, given that we know A happened. So, <coughs> one thing I want to remind you is uh, the order is important here. Uh, they're not the same, because here A happened, but here B happened. Uh, this is important. Um, Probability of A, probability, and yeah. Now, <clears throat> let's look at some conditional probability uh, examples. Now, assume a dice is rolled. So, you know, okay, the, what's the probability? So, let's look at here. The, the probability that the dice shows three, given that the dice shows an even number. So, we already know, this means we already know, uh, we already know, <coughs> Die shows the die shows shows an even number. So it means this. So in this case, if we already know the die shows an even number, so what's the probability of getting three? It is definitely zero because the three is odd. So we know they're all even numbers. So we cannot get uh, <clears throat> a three. And uh, let's look at the other question. I mean the other example. So the probability that the dice shows five, and uh, given that the dice shows a number bigger than four. So this one says, we already know dice shows bigger than four. It means five or six. So these are the only options we have here five or six so these are the outcomes now because this happened already and uh, we know the die shows of five or six so the question comes here what's the probability that the die shows if we am, uh, if we have five or six only at hand so it will be just one over two because five is one option out of two options so it's one or two now <clears throat> Let's look at the other question here. Uh, uh, yeah, the other example. Assume there is a uh, there are two there are two white balls and uh, one black ball in an urn. So let's put it here this way: two white and one black. Now, we draw two balls consecutively without replacement. So without replacement, it means like we don't pull the balls back. So we draw this one. Okay. Now, let's look at, this is your first draw. Then you, you take one, and then you put it back here. This is replacing it, replacement. So, sorry, this is not replaced, so this is not true, no. So we keep it here. Okay, now in this case then, we have a second row here. Now, uh, you will understand it this way. Now this happened, like you, you, you draw a ball and then uh, from the urn, then you draw another ball. So what's the probability that the second ball is white? Uh, given that the first ball is black. So 
let's try to imagine what happened here. So if you draw a black ball here, black ball here, so you will end up with only Ws here, right? So uh, after the first row, you end up with only two white balls. So what's the probability that uh, it's a it's a white ball? The second row is white. So there are two whites here, and you were asking about you know choosing a white ball. So it just definitely uh, it's one because only there are white balls here. Or you can say how many white balls are there? And total uh, total. So it is like two white balls and two total. So it will be just one. So you can also calculate it this way. Now. Uh, let's look at the other case here. If you draw, this is the first row. And you draw this one, this is white. So in this case, <clears throat> there will be just white and black. So then, if we know this one, the first one is white. Then what's the probability that the second one is white? So the second row is white. What's the probability now for this one? The probability of white. So the number of whites divided by the total. So this is equal to one over two. So because there are two balls now. And this is without replacement. So it means, well, we don't put it back. Okay, we don't, this doesn't mean that, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, this is not, put in here okay it's not put in here so these are uh, okay there are the examples of conditional probability so you have to be careful about the second condition here now let's look at a multiplication rule for dependent events if a and b are dependent events um, if the happening of one affects the happening of the other one so it's like drawing, so for example, drawing balls without replacement is a good example of uh, dependent events. Now, let me give you one example here. Okay, uh, I will use the previous one. So you have two balls and one black ball here. You choose, uh, you draw a ball and assume you didn't, okay, you didn't put it back, okay? So in this case, you will have only two uh, balls here. Now, as you see, the first ball, uh, the first row, and the second row, you know, they, they have the different in the number of, you know, balls here. And also, depending on what is W, if, it, if the first ball is W, then the situation will change like WB here. But if it is, uh, for example, the black, then uh, the situation, I mean, the urn will have like black, uh, white and white. So in this case, the probability of choosing white is different than here. In this, in this case, the probability here and the probability here changes. So they are dependent events. So uh, two events are affecting each other. In, in our case, uh, drawing balls, the first one is obviously changing the other one. Now. <clears throat> Uh, we have um, a rule for dependent events. Uh, so what's the probability that two events happen at the same time if they're dependent? So the formula is uh, the, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times probability of B uh, given that A. So this is for the dependent events, by the way. And let me give you a quick summary of what we learned so far. For the independent event, events, for the independent events, <clears throat> uh, we have the multiplication rule. B, uh, the probability of A times probability B is equal to probability A and B. But for the dependent events, we have the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times probability of B, given that A. Now, now, let's uh, solve an example here. But before the example, I want to give you uh, the summary here again. This independent, we have this, and dependent, we have this one. Now, uh, let's look at this example. A box contains five red balls, seven white balls. Uh, 
Okay, and uh, two balls are selected randomly. Find the probability that the first ball is red and the second ball is white if, okay, we have two cases here. Uh, one, if the drawing is done with replacement. With replacement means um, you take a ball here and you put it back. So if you have uh, three balls here, so you have, still have three balls here, and the situation does not change. So uh, the urn contains the same uh, the same number of balls of balls. So in this case, you know, choosing from here and choosing from here, they they come be, they become independent events. So in this case, it will be just <clears throat> the replacing of the ball back will make uh, the drawings. So with replacement, will make the draws are independent. They will make them independent. Independent. So in this case, uh, what is the probability that uh, the first ball is red and uh, and and the second one is is white? And uh, since they are independent now, the probability will be the first one is red and times the second one is white. <clears throat> now. Um, and for each one, the, the urn content is same. So we have uh, five reds here and seven white. So choosing a red one, the probability of red is five over seven. And the probability of white is um, seven over, sorry, this is 12. This is 12. This is 12. So then you you say what's the probability that it is red? What's the probability of the second one is white? So first and second doesn't matter here because uh, the the content of the urn, the structure of the urn does not change. So it will be just five over twelve times seven over twelve. So it will be thirty five over <clears throat> thirty five over uh, hundred forty four. Now let's look at the other question. The other case. What happens if we have some replacement? Okay, so if we put it, put the ball back. I mean, uh, if we, we we don't put the ball back, so we don't. So without replacement, we don't put uh, the ball back, the first ball back. So without replacement means this. So in this case, uh, we have to be careful. So it's asking what what is the probability that the first one is red and the second one <clears throat> is white. So since it's without replacement, uh, we don't uh, put the first ball back. So it changes the content of <clears throat> um, the urn. So there now this makes first drawing and the second draw are uh, dependent events. So if it is dependent, so you can write the rule. So look at here, dependent rule is this. So the probability the first is red times the probability that the second is white. This time we use the uh, <clears throat> The conditional probability, so it will be first is red. So um, the first one red is easy. Okay, now uh, let's try to visualize what's happening here, and uh, then you will understand it better. So here, this is a conditional probability here we use. The first one is red. <clears throat> From the first draw, it's uh, uh, five reds and seven whites. Now you take a ball and you say, what's the probability of red? So the probability that the ball is red is, <clears throat> what's the probability? It's five over 12 being red. 
<coughs> so it will be just 5O2L. Now, when it comes to the second one, we have to think this one is definitely a red. So definitely it's a red. So then um, this makes uh, the orange. Okay, this makes the urn four red and seven white. Now, in this case, okay, we're uh, the first one is red, and now if the first one is red, then we end up with this urn now. And what's the probability that the the second one is white? So uh, you check this one now. This is the second draw now, and then uh, what's the probability that it is white? So the probability white in the second one is 7 over 11. So you have to write here 7 over 11. So this will be 35 over 132. So we have to be careful if it is replacement or without replacement, the drawings. Now, in some questions, we can take the probability as a percentage and also the condition probability as, okay, the condi uh, probability uh, that B given that A is, uh, can be calculated or regarded as the percentage of B among A. Now, let's look at this example. So, suppose 45% of the students are male and 78% of them have a driving license. So, um, will be have okay them here refers to male so the 78 percent of the males have a driving license if one student is selected randomly find the probability that he's a male and has a driver's driving license um, now here we have to pay attention to and so uh, but before you know solving this question uh, it's always better to write, you know, the uh, your symbols, you know, um, we say, okay, I, I will uh, make my symbol M for the, the event that student uh, is a male, is, is male, and uh, the, as, uh, the student has a driving license. So in this case, I can write this uh, probability as a probability that M and B. Now, uh, one thing is is the being male and having a driver's license independent or dependent. So here, we don't have about the female, so we will assume it's dependent. So it's this, uh, the independence or dependence is not very obvious, then it's better you check it's dependent. So then it will be the probability uh, that the student is a male times the probability that uh, the student is a male, given that uh, male, what's the probability of um, the probability of driver's license? So you can check this one as a percentage of males. So you can take it as a percentage of males, so which is 0 0.45. And you can take this one as the percentage of driver's license among males. So this corresponds to here is 78%. So it will be that's 0 0.78. And this will be the answer. And you can take this one, as I said, as the percentage of driver's license driving license among among males so this is the one in here so it says 78 percent of the males now we will look at the uh, conditional probability in a different way now uh, we'll try to find the conditional probability from the multiplication rules if you remember uh, the multiplication rules uh, for example uh, for the independent events we have this multiplication rule, this, 
the probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times the probability of B in a B given that A. So um, uh, by using an uh, algebra, uh, a simple algebra here, we can derive the formula for this one. So we can isolate it by dividing both sides with the probability of A. And this will give us uh, the following formula for the probability of B given that A. So it will be just the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. And in the same way, in the same way, uh, we, okay, we can now look at the, the independent events. Now let's look at the independent events here. Um, the they're independent and the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times probability of B. Um, here, uh, we don't see any uh, probability of B uh, given that A. So since they're independent, so since they're independent, um, we have a natural result that the probability of A, a probability, I mean, A happens or not, it will not affect probability of B because they are independent. So for this reason, so you can have the probability of B given that A is equal to probability of B. And in the same way, you can say the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. And uh, if you uh, want to uh, use this formula here uh, for the independent also you can get this one uh, if you divide both sides the probability of uh, you know a and uh, you, you divide it by probability of a you say if this is the probability of b given that a so then you will have uh, this cancellation and you will get the probability of b here it's the same thing but anyway, if they were independent, so the, the condition, the conditional probability does not change the probability because they're independent. Whether A happened or not, uh, it doesn't change the probability of B because they're independent. Now, uh, in these formulas, uh, there is one important thing. The order of A, B is important in the formulas. For example, uh, for the dependent events, you can write here the probability of B given A is equal to probability of A and B divided by A here, the probability of A. So A, A, and here it's B, and here it's B. And here this is A, and this is A here. And this is B for the independent, and it's B, and it's B here. So be careful about this. Now let's look at this uh, conditional probability question. And um, the table below, gives the response of responses of 350 patients who had either uh, had uh, replacement uh, ankles replacement surgery or knee replacement surgery and uh, and it gives the, their satisfaction here so one uh, variable is the surgery side the other variable is the satisfaction here Now, if one patient is selected at random, determine the probability that the person had an ankle replacement given that he was dissatisfied. So you can make the symbols here, but I will just write them directly. Uh, the person had ankle, the probability that the, um, the person had ankle replacement surgery. So I will just write here ankle. Okay, the, what's the probability uh, that this guy has an ankle replacement surgery. Given that, okay, it's given that, so it will be uh, conditional probability. So I put this vertical bar, and he was dissatisfied. So when I use the rule here, the rule is the probability of the ankle probability that he had ankle surgery and he was dissatisfied divided by uh, the probability that he uh, he is dissatisfied 
Now, uh, how can you find the probability uh, that the uh, he had ankle replacement surgery and is satisfied? Uh, it's here. It's 50 out of 350. So it will be 50 out of 350. This one. Divided by the dissatisfied, the total number of dissatisfied is 120 divided by 350. So this will give you, if you um, simplify those, you've got 50 over 120 or 5 or 12. Now let's look at the other question. So the answer here is uh, 5 or 12. Now let's look at the other one. Determine the probability that the person was satisfied given that he had ankle replacement surgery. And so uh, he is satisfied and given that the person had ankle replacement. So we are looking at again, since we have the given that here, we have a condition probability. So um, the probability that the person is satisfied given that he had ankle surgery or ankle replacement surgery. And according to our probability rules, conditional probability, the probability uh, that he's satisfied and ankle surgery divided by the probability that he had ankle surgery. Yes. Okay. Now this one here is uh, we look we check the satisfied and ankle where is it satisfied and ankle 150 divided by all the number of patients 350 and divided by the ankle uh, the probability of ankle surgery which is uh, the probability uh, the total of ankle divided by the total of the students which makes 200 divided by 350. So, after cancellation, you will get here 15 or 20, which is um, 3 over 4. Let's look at this example. The probability that a married couple watch a t a TV, TV program together okay, is 60%, and the probability that the husband watches the program 80%, um, while the probability that his wife watches the program is uh, 65%. What is the probability that his wife, the wife watches the program given that her husband does? So, um, I will, uh, okay, let's use some symbols here, wife. So I will just say, okay, this is the event, wife watches the program. And I will use a uh, husband, uh, the, the husband watches the program. Now, uh, it's asking what, what is the probability that the wife watches the program given that the husband watches the program? So what is this? So um, what is the formula for the conditional probability? The probability is of wife watches and husband watches divided by the probability of husband watches. Now this one here, the probability that the wife and husband watches, it corresponds to they watch together. So it's 60%, so we can write this one as 60%. And the probability that the husband watches the TV, uh, watches the TV program is 80%. So uh, this is uh, three, okay, if you do the simplifications, it will be just three over four. Let's solve this example. 
24% of the students at the university are junior students, and 15% of the university students are the juniors who eat their lunch at a university restaurant. Okay, at the university restaurant. If a junior student is selected randomly, what is the probability that he eats lunch at the university restaurant? So um, let's say being, okay, if you uh, choose a student, uh, let's say J is the student, he is a junior student, and let's say eat at the restaurant, the student, let's say R is the event that student eats at the university restaurant. Now, what's the probability? <clears throat> now, we have to be careful here because if a student, if a junior student is selected randomly, we know that the student is a junior. So given that it's a junior student, what is the probability that he eats lunch at the university restaurant? So it's asking, by the way, this is very important here, so it's better you uh, pay attention to the first statement here. It's This question is basically a conditional probability question. And it's giving you the condition here, for a determined condition or happened condition as here in the first sentence. So what's the probability that he eats in a restaurant given that he is a junior student? So if you use, uh, we can use the formula. Uh, the formula is the probability that he is um, eating in a restaurant and he's a junior, so junior and restaurant, let's say, and divided by is a junior. So uh, you can check the uh, the probabilities as the percentages here. So what's the percentage of <coughs> the university students that are junior? I mean, who are junior eating in a restaurant? So uh, they make 15% of the population. I mean, uh, university students. Let's say 15%, and the probability uh, that the student is a junior. It's 24% uh, of the university students are junior students. So we can write here 24%. So it will be just 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.24. Uh, you can find uh, the numerical value of this by using calculator. Now let's look at this exercise. Assume that um, 75% of Saudi Arabia citizens use SDSL call, SDS call card. 81% Eight, uh, of call card users uh, also uses also use uh, an STC internet card. If one person is selected randomly, find the probability that he uses an SDS, uh, SDS call card and um, internet card. Now let's uh, use, okay, let's define some events. Um, I want to use just letters. And uh, this is uh, S is, uh, well, let's say C. C, uh, a citizen, or uh, if you choose a student, uh, a citizen, and the citizen uses a call card. C, C is referring to call card, and an I citizen uses an internet card. Okay, now it's asking what? If you choose a person or citizen, uh, then he uses an SDSS call, SDS call card and internet card. So this probability is, uh, we can just, uh, we can use a multiplication rule here. Uh, we can use uh, the probability of the, the call card user being a call card user or the student uses a call card times the probability uh, that he is using a call card given that he is an uh, internet card given that he is using a call card. 
So this here, the probability that he uses a call card is equal to here the percentage of okay um, call card users. And this is given to us uh, in the question: seventy-five percent of the people of the citizens using it. So it will be seventy-five percent or zero point seventy-five. And this one, you can think this one as the percentage of um, of internet use internet card users users among the call call card users among call card users. So this percentage is also given here because it says eighty one percent of the card users uses STC card also. So this also gives its zero point eight two one. So basically, you can multiply these two, and you will get the probability, the desired probability, 0 0.75 times 0 0.81.